Good morning and welcome to Michigan Farm and Garden. I'm Jody Pollock Newsom and I'm your host. We have a great show lined up for you this morning. This morning we're going to talk to you about apples. We're also going to talk to you about canning, preserving, and freezing. And we're also going to talk to you about what's in season. Stay tuned. Good morning, and again, welcome to Michigan Farm and Garden. Folks, here we are in the middle of August, and if you're looking at the bounty that we have here in our state, it is absolutely the perfect time to be here in Michigan, to get out there, to get those ag experiences, and to eat all those wonderful, wonderful commodities, fruits and vegetables that we have that are in season, and to be thinking about putting them up so you can enjoy them throughout the next year. So my guests this morning, we're really gonna focus on the bounty and what we can do to preserve that bounty as long as we can. My first guest this morning is Gretchen Mensing. She is from the Michigan Apple Committee. And actually, we have a crop to talk about this year. Uh, you certainly know last year with the weather that we had, it uh, really just decimated our apple and cherry crops and a lot of our other fruit crops across the state. This year, things look a lot better. So we're gonna talk a little bit uh, with Gretchen about what's to come. They have some promotions, some marketing coming up. We're gonna talk a little bit about that. Then we're also gonna talk with you about where to go, where to get recipes, and how to learn where you can get that perfect farm market or get that great commodity just for you. Then we're also back again this year with Joyce McGarry, uh, MSU Extension, and we are going to talk about canning, preserving, freezing. It is certainly that time of year, so we're gonna give you some of those helpful hints on what you need to know. We're also gonna talk to you about what jars to use. We're gonna share with you where you can get some recipes because certainly when we look at canning and preserving, safety is very important. Then I also have with me this morning, Dan Hill. He is with Montrose Orchards, and they certainly have a plethora of different commodities, different fruits, different vegetables. So we're gonna talk to you about what's in season. We're also gonna tell you what's coming up and share some ideas with you and get you really excited about some of those great opportunities to get to the farm or the farm market later this fall. Then we're also going to share a recipe for peach blackberry jam. So Dan's gonna come back and we're gonna do that recipe so you know what you can do when we're looking more at preserving. Folks, stay tuned. We will be back with our first guest right after the Michigan Farm and Garden Fact of the Week. It's time for the Michigan Farm and Garden Fact of the Week. Michigan apples add an estimated annual contribution of over 700 million to the state's economy. Michigan is the nation's third largest apple producer, on average growing 20 million bushels of apples per year or sometimes even more. For more information, go to michiganapples.com. And welcome back. We are back with Gretchen Munsing, Michigan Apple Committee. Welcome back, Gretchen. It's good, good to have you. Good to be here. Thank you. And like I kind of said, I'm very excited because we have <laughs> stuff to talk about this year. Absolutely. And all our growers are very excited, too. It's going to be a great year. Well, and I think us as consumers, we at last year was so tough. We are ready to get out there and go fill those bushel baskets. Well, I'm happy to report we're looking at a good quality crop for this year. And we've got some early varieties that are going to be ready very soon. In fact, in the next week or so, you'll probably see some uh, some ginger gold, some Paula Red in your grocery store, and uh, maybe even before that in some of your local farm markets. Awesome. It's always so exciting. I mean, that first apple of the year really kind of sets the tone for fall. Absolutely. Crunching into that, that first taste, it's like fall is here. There we go. And we're ready. We'll have, ready, oh. we'll have Rachel ready. We'll get out there and we'll be picking. That's great. Well, we'll see you out there, I'm sure. Um, and we actually are publishing a, a list of harvest dates on our website, uh, michiganapples.com, um, so that you can find out when your favorite variety is going to be ready. Because we start harvesting, you know, in August and all the way through to the end of October, you can get um, a lot of different varieties here in Michigan. 
Well, and I know for you guys, you're getting stuff out to consumers. You're also working with retail. There's a mm. lot going on. And, and for you, your funding comes from the Michigan's Apple Farmers. Yes. So you are looking to really get that information out, and you have a lot going on. Absolutely. Um, you know, after last year, we really haven't been in the marketplace at all for about a year. So we're really focused on retail. Um, you're going to see a lot of activity in your, your local grocery store uh, this year, and we're bringing a lot of programs, um, some programs focused on locally grown, on uh, health and fitness. We might focus on some uh, certain varieties, but there'll be a lot of activity in your grocery store. You'll probably see some um, chef demos showcasing different recipes and so forth. Really a lot of activity in that area to sort of celebrate our comeback into the marketplace. Well, and I know too that's so difficult because especially when you have commodities, it's totally dependent upon the weather. Mm -hmm. So it is kind of fun when you know that you have a crop there to kind of have some of that celebration. And I know you guys have also looked a lot at what's information that we can flow back to the consumers. Absolutely. I think the consumers are excited to have us back and the retailers are too and certainly the growers are happy to be back. So I think there'll be a lot of energy in the produce departments this year. Well and I like too that you brought up recipes because mm -hmm. you know you mentioned the locally grown, we're looking for locally grown, mm -hmm. but we're also seem to really be looking for what are those recipes, what mm -hmm. can I do, what's something different and, and along with some of the traditional things. Well my favorite is apple pie, no doubt. Yes. But um, there are certainly a lot of different things that you can do with apples and we want to you know educate people about that um, from breakfast to lunch and dinner you know there are a number of different things that you can do and you can see on our website we've got hundreds of recipes um, and we also have recipe cards that are available um, by emailing our staff at michiganapples.com uh, uh, email address you can request the recipe cards that they can be mailed to you. Um, and there are there are hundreds of recipes available. This is just a few. Um, but you know, muffins, sandwiches, desserts, lots of different options for what you can do with apples. And we also have information on our website available so that you can find out which varieties are best to bake with or cook with. Well, and I think that's so important because we always talk about how unique we are and all the different varieties we have. Mm -hmm. But sometimes it's not always easy to know what variety is really suited best for what. Right, and, and some varieties are just better for fresh eating. Others really can hold up well um, baked in a pie or some, some are really good for applesauce. So I know um, I like to eat Honeycrisp fresh but I know some people like to put them in pie. I just, I don't even think that a Honeycrisp would make it into a pie. I'd eat it before it got in there. <laughs> those really, those really are. And those are a new variety that have been out, but those really are good. They are, and they're very popular too. Um, we usually, uh, they usually aren't around the whole season just because <laughs> people eat them up. <laughs> but there are more going into the ground, so we'll have more uh, for our consumers each year. Good. Well, and I think that's one of those things too, especially when you're looking at a crop like apples, you really have to be planning, looking at those consumer trends, and I think that's where a lot of your marketing kind of comes in, Absolutely. looking at how this fits together and letting us know as consumers what's what's coming out there. Yeah, we're looking at um, some some varieties that are really popular with uh, consumers. You know, of course, Honeycrisp is really popular. Another variety that's really popular um, in consumer taste tests that we've done over the past few years is Jana Gold, and that's actually my favorite variety. Um, it's, it's it's crisp, it's juicy, it's got a nice sweet tart flavor. Um, they're available around the end of September um, and they are always a consumer favorite. So you might see a little bit more emphasis on the Jana Gold in the marketplace this year. And then a third variety that we're really focusing on is actually Fuji. And those um, are usually ready uh, in October, um, but that's also a consumer favorite that's really done well in our taste tests. Well, and there's so many opportunities to get out there. And one of the things I know we've had you on before and we talked about this great app mm -hmm. so that you can actually go and find where you can get your Michigan apples. Yes, that's the Michigan Farm Market Finder app and it's available for iPhone, iPad, um, the, the Apple devices. No pun intended. <laughs> yeah. um, but we also have information available on our website. If you don't have an iPhone, um, you can certainly go to michiganapples.com. We have a list. Um, you can actually just click on a map in the area of the state you're looking at and um, a list of farm markets, you picks, cider mills will come right up on the screen. We also have in the same uh, place on our website uh, events festivals that are happening that might be celebrating apples in some way. You can find all that on there and that's just been updated for the fall as well. Awesome. Well, and I know one thing we all want to listen for, those pure Michigan apple, the commercials, all the stuff you guys have. You brought one of the hats. Yep. 
it's just been an amazing campaign. Yes, um, we are so lucky to be able to partner with the Pure Michigan folks um, to, to promote Pure Michigan grown apples. Uh, it's a partnership that we've had for three years now and we've been able to work with them to do some uh, radio advertising in Detroit and Chicago to promote the, our locally grown apples. Um, and in addition to that, just being a part of that brand has really helped people identify which apples when they're in the store, they can find which apples are grown in Michigan, and that's, of course, really helpful to the consumers as well who want to buy locally grown products. Well, Gretchen, we appreciate it. So much going on. We are going to look for our Pure Michigan apples. We'll make sure folks visit the website if you haven't had the opportunity. Learn where you can go. Get your Michigan cider. Get your Michigan apples. Get to that farm market and really experience the bounty of Pure Michigan. We'll be back right after this message. The Cherry Marketing Institute wants you to know about tart cherries. Cherry's red color comes from powerful antioxidants. Available year-round, it's easy to incorporate cherries into your daily diet. Visit ChooseCherries.com. Michigan's 1,000 apple growers take pride in producing delicious apples from one generation to the next. From the Great Lakes come great flavors. Look for locally grown Michigan apples. Have Jody speak at your next agricultural event. Go to JodyLive.com. And welcome back. We are back with Joyce McGeary, MSU Extension. Joyce, welcome back. It's that time of year. Thank you, Jody. Yeah, I can't believe it. It's back again, isn't it? Well, and to me, this is always such a fun topic. And I think one of those that people just think they know all about canning or preserving, but there's so many things we need to pay attention to. Well, I can't thank you enough for having us on again year after year because things do change. And MSU Extension has always been um, a very important part of preserving for a long time. And we still are. We welcome consumer calls. Um, and so this gave us an opportunity to talk about a new trend that started with um, our canning jars that are out now. Now we've always promoted the mason jars, which are the ball and curd jars that are available right now. But in some of the specialty kitchen stores, they are now selling the one piece lids that are similar to this jar that was used a long time ago. And also the uh, rubber rings are also being sold in some of these kitchen stores. And we have not had any research done on these type of jars, so we're not recommending that they be used. So this gives us a good opportunity to let the people know that really to go to use the really standard ball and curr mason jars. And these can even be used for freezing as well as canning. So they're just a durable jar. They have a shelf life of about 10 years. Wow. as long as they're not chipped or cracked in any way um, so they last a long time and so this is what we really recommend is using the um, the two-piece lids that are still uh, purchased in any hardware store and any of the uh, larger um, stores that sell canning supplies uh, making sure that you get the um, the two-piece lids that fit the correct jar. Mm -hmm. um, these are the regular mouth. They also make the large mouth jars. So make sure that you buy the, the proper size for this. But this is what they're made for. So when you are processing the food that you need to do in your water bath or your pressure canner, you are assured that there will be a, a good seal on these jars. Where these, we cannot guarantee that a seal would be uh, safe. Or re reusing, because I know there's folks that if they have a mayonnaise jar or you have a whatever jar, you just put it through the dishwasher, clean it, and use it again. Correct. Those are not recommended either. These type of lids and rings do not fit a manufactured jar. Those are considered a one-use jar, and they should just be recycled after the product has been used in them, not to be preserved in. You have a large chance of having breakage in the, um, in the water bath canner or the pressure canner by using the manufactured jars. And all the work that goes into preparing your food to be preserved, it's really not worth having your jars break. So this way we have a guarantee that they'll be safe. Well, and I think that's so important because a lot of it is a safety issue and, and you know, I've not had botulism from canning, but I have had food poisoning a couple times and once you've had that, you will do anything it takes to not get sick like that uh, again and, and it can be worse than just getting sick. It can be. It can be deadly. 
um, to young children, to seniors, to those with any type of an immune system disorder. It can be very deadly. And we're so glad that it has come back as a, um, as a way to feed your family and to have an uh, opportunity to engage in community gardens and your own gardening and um, the local community of the farmer's markets. But when it comes to preserving, you really need to use the research-based recipes that are out there. The internet is a great source, but we really have to be careful making sure that the addresses are from a research-based university or from Blue Ball, the Ball Blue Book or from USDA. Those are what we recommend. Well, and I know you have done a lot of work, and there's some great pieces. We talked a while ago about the Michigan Fresh program, but I'm just going to have you kind of give us a little update and talk about the pieces that you've prepared. Yes, I think Dr. Kuhn was on when we first started our Michigan Fresh program, and these were done by the food safety team out of MSU Extension across the state of Michigan. All educators that teach food preservation all contributed to the editing and writing of these fact sheets that are available at Michigan Fresh at Michigan State University Extension. They're all in a PDF format, so they're easy to download. Uh, very helpful when it tells you how to either freeze or water bath or pressure can any fruit or vegetable grown in Michigan. Well, and one of the things I like, you know, we had talked a little bit, if I can't find it there, it can't be done. There you go. Yeah. I, I think that's so important and to know the science goes behind it because things do change. Varieties change. We have hybrids. When we look at what we've been able to do, it also affects what we're looking at preserving and freezing. It does. It, and it goes back to um, the agriculture, the soil, everything. So you're very correct in saying that things change every year. We do recommend buying new cookbooks every several years because of the, the timing changes on the um, preserving. Uh, Freezing is a little more forgiving in that way. Um, we um, do have a lot of classes going on around the state, so call your local extension office, find out where the classes are, um, and then you can also download these in the meantime to give you some extra information on specific fruits and vegetables that you may be growing. Okay. Well, Joyce, we appreciate it. There's so much to, to know, and it's nice to know that we have some of the resources, and this Michigan Fresh program is so helpful, especially if you just want to get into it or to make sure you're using the right technology for the day. And I think that's a great way is just to, just to know that your, your processing is doing, you're doing it correctly. Right. Because you're right. We don't want to go to all that trouble, and we certainly don't want to have anybody get sick. No. No, not at all. So right. thank you so much for the opportunity. Thank you. Folks, get out there. Take advantage of the opportunities get the bounty that we have here in our state visit Michigan Fresh we'll link there from michiganfarmandgarden.com and you can get the latest information and you can start freezing and preserving today the fast track to more jobs and America's energy independence. Advanced performance is here now. Biodiesel, America's advanced biofuel. And welcome back. We are back with Dan Hill of Montrose Orchards. Dan, welcome back again. It's kind of like a right moving from summer into fall to have you on the show. It's a great spot to be in. And look at all the stuff we got available today. You're, you're asking about how many, uh, what's available today? It's like, what's not available today? It's probably the shorter list to do. <laughs> you know, like asparagus and winter squash are probably the things not out there. But you got all your summer annuals coming in. You got tomatoes and sweet corn. You got your melons, watermelon and muskmelon. You've got small fruits. You got blackberry, raspberry, blueberry. You got tree fruits. You got peaches and apricots and plums. And it's the start of the apple season. The summer apples have just sort of gone by. The early fall apples, the Paula Reds, the Jersey Max are just coming on, and we got a big crop coming. There's going to be a lot available across the state. Well, and you know, now really is the time to get out there. You know, we talked with Joyce a little bit, can preserve it, but get out there and just get it and, and try it. And I have to say, when you brought these, I wasn't sure what these were. I don't think I've ever seen 
this variety before. The Shiro plum. They've been growing those for a lot of years. We've got uh, European plums and Japanese plums. That's a Japanese style, rounder plum. European styles, we're more used to the uh, Stanley prune plums, the longer ones. Yeah. It's just, it's so exciting and there's so many different things we can get out there and try. Red raspberries, black raspberries, yellow raspberries, purple raspberries, there's all kinds of colors out there and flavors. But this is the time where you still get a little time before school starts, you know, all the free labor with your kids out there. <laughs> there get them out to the pick your own farm and pick some of the stuff up. And this is the time as you had your canning people on, canning, freezing and drying because right now you've got all kinds of choices. And as we're going to talk about later in the recipe, you can actually mix some of the stuff together as you're going. But it's a great opportunity to get some fresh product and keep it stored well into next year. Well, and I think too, part of getting out there, get those kids that experience, let them, you know, we had a few, not a lot, but a few raspberry bushes. And Rachel just loved, she actually ate probably more than she picked, but it was the whole experience after dinner, we would go out and we would pick. And that's half the fun, going out and hit, sampling something that you've grown or somebody else has grown right off the bush, there's nothing like it. Absolutely nothing like it. Especially after last year when we had our crop losses, it puts a little more emphasis on this year to get out there and to can and dry and freeze some of this stuff because we've been so used to having a good crop every year, there's always something out there. And after last year's zeros in some of our areas or very minimal amounts, now we realize we should have froze some of that stuff in the year before, should have had some, a little better planning on that. Well, and certainly this year, it looks like everything is coming up pretty bountiful. The weather's been very good for it. We've had ample rain across most of the state. We've had some cooler weather. We're putting some good color on the apples. You're seeing everything run probably a week to 10 days behind normal or, or something like that. And so we haven't seen the stress on your small fruits like your blackberry, raspberry, and blueberry. So they've been coming on a little slower. They're, they're holding up well. The quality's great. The shelf life's wonderful on these things. These are sweet cherries. Still holding up excellent, okay? Mm -hmm. So that's one thing that's been very good about this August been a little cooler and things are lasting a little longer so you got a better opportunity to get some more stuff. Well and certainly as we look ahead there's a lot out there on the horizon. There's a lot of material that come in yet yes I mean as I said apple, apples are coming we're going to get back into fresh apples in the farm markets we're going to get cider seasons coming up which we didn't have a chance to last year for many areas but that's one thing I'm looking forward to is apple cider season and donuts in the fall. But that's oh I was just <laughs> thinking that's that's just uh, that does kind of welcome you into fall and if you do the color tour there is nothing like a jug of cider in the car with your donuts ready to hit the road. Life doesn't get any better, does it? It doesn't. <laughs> well, and certainly, you know, I think that's one of the things in Michigan, we have such a strong cider heritage or tradition, if you will. There's so many folks that are out there that make cider and it is just, it, it's wonderful. You're seeing cider, you're seeing wineries as well. And we have that long run from the Benton Harbor all the way up to the Traverse City area. So if you're doing any fall color tours, starting the north working your way south. You can also reverse that, start in the south and see some of your crops coming in. If there's something you're looking forward to, if you have to be traveling, still on vacation, you'll find stuff a little further south and towards the middle of the state, then a little further north. So you can get five and six and seven week seasons on many of these crops that you would normally get maybe one or two weeks locally. Well, and certainly as we're looking ahead, you know, we talked apples are coming. I know too, we have that fall with the pumpkins and, and all that. You guys are involved a lot of that. It's a good opportunity to get folks out to the farm. Family friendly fun and educational <laughs> as well. Not just where your food comes from, how it's grown and actually seeing it in the field is, is very eye opening to most of your kids. And it's something that they need to learn. Especially after last year's freeze, when they're looking on the counter going, where's all the apples from last year? And you're like, they froze, they didn't occur. And you have mm -hmm. to explain again why that occurred. And so after a while, people start picking this stuff up. But it starts with your kids, and education is very important. Take them with you when you're doing this stuff. Well, and I think that experience, you know, you don't have to spend a lot to get out there and have a day getaway. And it's those wonderful memories, and it starts that tradition of cider and donuts in the fall. Take a few pictures, look online, see what's available and who's open. Best thing to do. It's a great weekend. Great. Well, Dan, I think we'll take a quick break. Then we'll come back. Folks are going to take a quick break. We're going to come back. And then Dan is going to share with us a recipe for peach blackberry jam. This hog is head over hoof for meal made from U.S. soybeans. Now, one hog isn't that impressive, but suppose we add another, and another, and another. Before long, you've got billions of hungry customers around the world all clamoring for the same thing. Our soybeans. Learn more about the billion dollar appetite of animal agriculture at beyondtheelevator.com. Brought to you by America's Soybean Farmers and their checkoff. <laughs> Thank you. 
And welcome back. We are back again with Dan Hill of Montrose Orchards. You know, Dan, we talk about the bounty, but there's nothing like canning, preserving, baking, and you have a great recipe for peach blackberry jam, and you also have in your family, your <laughs> wife is an amazing cook. Well, she's a chef, so, yeah, so yeah. It cooks a little step down there, but there she's, a, she's a true chef, so she has a chance to play with a lot of stuff that we have out there. Nothing like even a fresh apple or a fresh peach off the tree, but if you want to keep that flavor, there's a, you have to find a good way to either can it or freeze it or dry it for the coming season, because you will lose that good quality after a period of time. And one thing we brought in the recipe this year was just for some mixing some different products for jams and jellies. Now canning is important, it's very easy to do, but it's, you have to be safe with it, you have to follow instructions, MSU has some great instructions for it. We've put out a very simple recipe on how to mix a couple of varieties of things together. This one happens to be blackberry peach. Um, you can mix all of your small fruits, you know, blackberry, raspberry, strawberry, blueberry, whether you're using a fresh product or a frozen product, you can pretty much trade those on, on, a, on a pound for pound or ounce for ounce basis. Okay. Okay, so if you want to do a blackberry raspberry, you know, get a red and black together, you'll find these are very aggressive flavors. They tend to be a little juicier, but when you get into the peach and the plums, a little more uh, su subtle flavors, when you're doing jams, you can get some better body. So when you mix a small fruit, and a tree fruit into a jam, you'll get some body from the plum and peach. You get a great color and flavor out of the raspberry. And if you want to turn this one backwards, you like more peach than blackberry, just reverse the amounts and you have peach blackberry jam or blackberry peach jam. Oh, very cool. Okay, so we, we brought some to show. We've got, we have got some blackberry peach, blackberry cherry, you can do blueberry blackberry, blueberry apple. There's a lot of things you can do and you won't find this in the store, so if you can learn to do it yourself, you have something that if you've gone out and picked your own or picked at your neighbor's place or picked at your farmer's market, then you have something to remember that you're by because you've made something a little, a little more valuable, a little more value added to it, I guess, is the term you'd want to utilize. Well, and I have to say, too, you know, as you kind of brought this up, I've been to some fall weddings, and that is actually the gift, as opposed to some of the candies and stuff, it is jam. And, we're, yeah, and, and, we're getting and, more and more calls for some of this handmade stuff, whether it's caramel apples or some special made jam, small jars, as a gift. Remember, it's a food gift, but it's also made with, normally the, somebody in the family is helping to make the stuff. It's a little more personal gift than just buying something, putting a sticker on it or a ribbon and saying, here you go. Mm -hmm. Well, and I think even now, thinking ahead to winter, looking at, you know, sometimes as the families get bigger and, and you quit doing all the gift exchanges, foods like this are great ideas. And, you know, I know one of the things that you and your mom taught me to do was freezing those blueberries, getting those blueberries up, and then you know, you have, uh, uh, when we look at some of the pastry, some of those things that you can do that are very, very easy. Yeah, freezing is so simple on, on small fruits. Blackberry, blueberry especially, even raspberry. Just put them on a sheet tray, make sure they're dry. Stick them on a sheet tray, stick them in a freezer, take them back out like little marbles, put them in a bag. And you can use them all year long, fresh, in the oatmeal, in the cereal. You can put them into bread doughs. You can put them whatever you want, but they're, they're available. And it's so simple. Just bring them home, make sure they're dry. That's all you got to do. You know, tray them freeze them, lay them in a the bag, and you're set. I mean, that's, that's all there is. That's the simplest way to preserve something right there. Well, and the thing I like is then you have them throughout the season, like we said, and, and those are great little gifts, easy things to do, inexpensive things to do, but they really seem to mean the most. And many of our customers are coming and reminding us that they, we had such a big crop in 2011, they, they froze a bunch, thought they'd never use them up. Well, after the light crop last year, they've now used that up and going, oh, I need to get at least a year and a half supply in the freezer <laughs> just in case something happens, so that's one of the reasons you do that. Now, we don't always recommend keeping them for a year and a half or two in a freezer, but it's not impossible, and they still have a decent quality. Well, and we're almost out of time, but I want to make sure the one thing we didn't talk about, you brought some honey, because yes. honey also fits in when we look at the bounty of Michigan. Boy, we don't get anywhere on fruits without having some honey bees and some honey. And so we've got uh, a little bit of clover honey, got some buckwheat over here, some, there's different varieties and flavors of honey, but our honeybee population is very important. I know we're, we're still working on some difficulties in that area and still going through some of the turmoil of, of changing some varieties of honeybees, but this is something that it is absolutely critical to our industry and it, it cannot be understated. Well, and folks, if you want to try the recipe, you can visit us online at michiganfarmandgarden.com or write to Michigan Farm and Garden Recipes, PO Box 461, Williamston, Michigan, 48895. And I think the main point we want to tell you is get out there, see what we have in season, get to your farm market, go to your U-Pick. Folks like Dan, the farm is open for folks to come. Farmers markets and farm markets both. Call them up, see who is open, and get out there. Folks, have a great week. See you back here next weekend. Bye-bye.